All right, in this tutorial video, we are going to recreate the classic bouncing rectangle or bouncing square screensaver as used on countless DVD players through the years. So the first thing is after making a new program, we are with our basic fundamental program here and we're gonna switch things up a little bit. So the first thing I like to do is comment on our close brackets so we don't lose them. So I'm gonna drop a comment on close setup and then we're going to drop a comment on close draw. Okay. And we're also going to label our global section up here on line one. So we're going to call this global. Okay. And just kind of space things out a little bit. Now we are going to move the background. So we're going to delete the background from setup and drop the background in draw. So we're going to make the background black, like the classic background and we're gonna ditch the default ellipse. We're gonna leave our create canvas window width by window height, so that's gonna give you a full size program. So if I push play, we should just have a black screen. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a couple variables for our box. So we're gonna make a variable called box X and a variable called box Y. And in setup, we're gonna set these variables to the center, so start box in center of screen. A little comment here, so I'm gonna say box X is equal to width divided by two, and box Y is equal to height divided by two. So that's gonna find the center of our window width and the center of our window height, and place our box there. Now to do this, we actually need to draw a box. So let's set a fill color to be white, and let's turn off our stroke by saying no stroke. And then let's draw our box. So we're gonna say rect, box X, box Y. And then of course we need our uh, actual box width and height. So how big do we want our box to be? Let's just say 100 by 100. Okay, so if we push play, this should give us a box right in the center, but it's not quite in the center, the corners of it in the center. So that's because we actually have to set our rect mode to be center. So right here in setup, we're just gonna say rect mode center. Okay, and that sets origin box coordinate to center. All right, now you only have to do that one time. So now our box is perfectly centered. Great. Now we want to make this guy actually move. Okay, so we're gonna make this move just like a ball bounces using physics. So we're gonna give our box an X direction so it can move horizontally, a Y direction so it can move vertically, and a speed. So that's gonna require a couple variables. All right, so first let's make var box speed. Uh, and I'm gonna set my speed to be five. You could always change that later. We're gonna make var box direction x, which I'm gonna to set to be one, and var box direction y, also set to be one. Uh, these are going to change, but the positions are gonna change based on the direction the box is going. So one is gonna be moving to the right or down, negative one will be moving to the left or up, and we're gonna use a very simple little equation to actually make our box bounce all right so once you have your variables let's set up our physics okay so our physics is the equation that actually makes the box position affected by these three variables so right now our box is always located at width divided by two and height divided by two we're going to change that by actually having our box move based upon the values of its direction and its speed so to do that we're going to say that box x is equal to box x plus box direction x times box speed. Now be very careful with your capitalization, so make sure you match your global variables, and this is gonna be move horizontally. We're gonna do the same for y. So box y is gonna be box y plus box direction y times box speed. Make sure you don't do x for both. Move 
vertically. And in theory, you could have two different speeds. You can have one speed for your horizontal direction, one speed for your vertical direction, but we're going to keep it a constant speed for both. So if I push play, our box is now moving diagonally down. The reason it's moving diagonally down is because we have positive one for x, which is to the right, positive one which, to y, which is down. So combined, we're moving diagonally. If I had turned one of these off, so if I turn off y, it's just going to move horizontally. If I turn off the horizontal, it'll just move vertically. And if you have them both on, it will move diagonally. Now, the next thing is we actually want our box to bounce when it hits a wall. So we're going to have to set up an if statement for each wall. So let's have bounce functions. All right, here we go. The bottom wall would be if box y is greater than or equal to, oops, greater than or equal to height. Okay, so this would be hit bottom wall. Now, to change our direction, so we hit the bottom wall, we want to bounce into the exact opposite direction. And because this is box Y, we're only concerned with box direction Y. So what we're going to say is box direction Y is equal to box direction Y times negative one. That's going to change direction. Then we close our if statement, close greater than H for greater than height and when we push play, our box should bounce off the bottom wall. And it does, but then it goes off the right wall. So let's add an equation for right. If box X is greater than or equal to width, this is hit right wall, box direction X equals box direction X times negative one change direction, close hit R for right wall. So width, of course, is our right wall. Let's give this a shot. Bounce, bounce, and then off the top. So I'm actually going to steal both of these if statements and paste them here. So our next one would be if box Y is less than or equal to zero, this would be hit top wall, box direction y equals box direction y times negative one, and this would be if less than zero. And our last one would be if box x is less than or equal to zero, hit left wall, box direction x, box direction x, close, hit L. This guy should now bounce all the way around. Bounce, 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 and it looks like we'll have a double bounce here. Perfect. Now, in the classic DVD screensaver, there are two other things. The box changes color when it bounces, and of course, there's a little DVD logo on the box. So let's start with the color. What we're going to do is we're going to hit the wall, change color, and then change direction. So I'm going to say fill, uh, let's make it be red for the bottom wall. Change color. And I'm just going to copy this. Then on this guy, let's make it green. On this guy, let's make it blue. And on the last one, let's make it yellow. So that'll be something like 255, 255. All right, let's give that a shot. So we're white when we start, and we remain white. Now, the reason for that is because up here, we actually said our fill in draw. I don't want that. Okay, so we're actually going to move our fill and our no stroke to set up. So that's going to turn off and set our initial color. And we're going to start with the initial color of yellow. So now our box should be yellow at the start, but change every time it hits an edge. The reason I started with yellow is because in theory, the last one would be yellow as well. So there we go. Now, instead of doing a set color, you could, of course, use the random command to make it a random color each time it hits, but the classic one does have set colors. 
Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna import an image. So we're actually gonna hit save, and I'm just gonna call this guy DVD sample. All right. And we need to do a couple things for our image. The first is a variable for our image. So we're gonna call this image. You could name it whatever you want to, doesn't really matter. Then we're gonna make a new function. So I'm gonna scroll down and find our close draw, and we're gonna make a new function down here called preload. And this is where you associate your variable with your actual image. So we made a variable called image. So we're gonna say something like image equals and we're gonna actually upload an image to our program to associate this word image with. So I'm going to open up my side menu and go to files, hit select, and I've already downloaded an image called DVD logo. So we're gonna upload that. And once it's uploaded, it turns pink. And I'm gonna say that image equals load image, capital I, DVD, logo.png, because that's the name of my file in single quotations there. So now every time I say image, it's going to think dvdlogo.png. Simple as that. Now, just like we set our rect mode, we're actually going to set our image mode. So I'm just gonna say initial color, and then we're gonna say prepare modes. You can, of course, organize your program however you want. I'm just gonna put all my modes together nice and neat like this. And we're gonna say image mode center. All right, so that's gonna change the origin of our image to the center, just like we did our rectangle. Then what I'm gonna do is right underneath where we drew our box, we are going to place our image. I'm gonna say image, image. Now I should point out the second one is actually the name of my image. So for example, if I were to change this to be DVD, and then down here to be DVD, I would then say image DVD. So the command is image, the second thing, the first parameter is actually the name of your image. So now it's DVD, I'm gonna leave it as DVD. But I'm gonna set the X and Y to be the same as box X, box Y, and the width and the height to be just smaller than the box. So this will give me my image, which is now called DVD, in the position of box X, box Y, and with the actual, uh, the, the size to be just slightly smaller. Let's give this a shot. There's our DVD logo right on top of our color changing box. Now it's important that I put the actual image below the rectangle. So here's the rectangle, here's the image. So that way the image is in front of the rectangle. If I had drawn this before, then of course the image would be behind the rectangle. Now, if you want, you can play with this. As I mentioned, you can customize with like random colors. You could change your speed. Maybe every single time it hits the wall, it speeds up. Endless ways for you to customize, but this is a recreation of our classic DVD screensaver.